Well, I, I actually want to this question kind of kind of jumps a little bit into what you were saying about the peer reviewed paper. Um, mm -hmm. And this is more like a, a, a kind of um, the world of Peter Joseph type question. What is your relationship with academia? I went to, well, I, I'm just self-taught. I like to read. That's pretty much it. I was a uh, classically trained musician. I was very fortunate in my late middle school age at 14 to be accepted into a college university for music. And I stayed in that institution until I graduated at high school level. And then I moved to New York City and went to a music conservatory there, went into enormous amount of debt. I say, you know what, I'm not doing that. And then I just started to, you know, do contractual things with you know music and, and video. And I just read. That's pretty much it. That's all it really takes. <laughs> with intent, obviously. I'm very strategic in what I choose to read and spend my time on. And I can't think of anything more fascinating than understanding human society. Uh, why are we doing what we're doing? How did we get here? How can we get out of it? You know, so and I think everyone needs that side of them. That's another thing. I, I have this term I call the bubble people. And it's the people that have been docile. They think that the world is like the, the I think America is like the late uh, 1950s where, you know, the boomer generation, the, the world's in wreckage, you have the middle class. Everyone's like, oh, we why can't we just get the middle class back and all this? They don't understand that things keep changing and becoming more and more inequality based, whether it's globally or whether it's domestically. So, you know, this whole notion of make America great again, it's not just a slogan that Reagan actually invented. Uh, Trump just you know imitated him. It, 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 it harnesses this delusion that the positivity of something comes from behind. We have to go back to something. And I, I think uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> what, the, what the hell am I talking about? Uh, excuse me. I'm, I'm I was listening. I was into it. <laughs> okay. Well, see, well, I, well, I guess the, the, the second care. part, the second part of that question, like, like what I was curious about, yeah. do you get contacted for say lectures or to collaborate on different publications, like by the academic world? Is that a thing that no. happens for you? I mean, no. I, I was not really, no, I've, I've done two TEDx talks. And I've, it, there was a period where I just went around and did lots of talks and events that we held with the, with the zeitgeist movement and stuff like that. And I haven't done that in quite some time. And, I was actually, believe it or not, on a list. Uh, my, one of my uh, publicists connected me with an agent uh, out of the UK to be at a lecture circuit. And then she contacted me some months later, said, sorry, <laughs> no one's interested in you, which is understandable because the kind of thing I talk about would be perceived as so incredibly radical. You're not going to see someone on a TED talk talk about the need to eviscerate this kind of economy. You, you, you're not going to see that kind of yet. Now, I'm hoping as the awakenings with all of this stuff like COVID inspires people to start thinking we have to do something different. I mean, it's it's out there. People are talking about the system change. They don't know what they're talking about, really, but they talk about system change and whatever whatever definition they've come up with, seeing that we have to do something about the ecological crisis and we have to do something about the public health crisis generated by socioeconomic inequality. But you will not not see any of the major institutions uh, academia, universities really have the courage to come out and say, this is an economic problem at its sociological root. It's still, it's still taboo. It's still taboo. The, no Do academic. you think that's a huge problem? What? Uh, well, everything you just said. I, I mean, of course, academia is supposed to challenge preconceived notions. What's the point of the academy if not to do that? Yeah, I hear you. I mean, think about universities. They, they have a rote kind of, um, unfolding they the recipes of this kind of humanities the disciplines they, they very rarely change it's it's been the same basic structure since the industrial revolution we're basically engineering humans to think to be workers in that kind of old world there's some exceptions of course but it's also very compartmentalized so you know you, you look at I, i'm you look at these scientists that are so brilliant people from mit uh, sociologists and I, I i just can't understand how they they can't pick up on the fact I mean, I know it sounds arrogant to me, but how can they not see the root of these issues? How can they not say, come out, you know, a notable person like oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson? Why can't he come out and say, you know what? We got a serious problem with our economy. It's based on infinite growth and cyclical consumption. It can't work unless people buy and consume and consume. That's not very scientific if we want to be uh, sustainable on this planet. You don't hear that. You don't hear that from many of these people. And I've been a very vocal critic. I mean, the only person that came close was Carl Sagan. I miss Carl Sagan so much because he's the only one that really kind of 
had the courage to just say what everything needed to be said. And if he was around today, he would probably be a greater savior uh, than he was back then because he would he would have the courage once again, uh, particularly uh, regarding the economy. And he was talking about climate change, you know, way back before anybody else was the science of what's happening in our atmosphere through greenhouse gas emissions. So, yeah, I, I'm very disappointed, very disappointed. I mean, it takes a, a musician like me and a, a rogue group of people to start talking about the subject when the the advanced scientific thinking community needed needs to be out there just stating this outright. It's it's not that hard to do. And the reason they don't do it is because the reputation the compartmentalization of their jobs. And the other per only person that I talk that I know, excuse me, the only other person that seems to say these kinds of things is Dr. Robert Sapolsky out of Stanford University. Robert has been very outspoken against the criminal justice system. I interviewed him in my third film as well. Uh, he's the only one that has the courage. He, he literally speaks about the fact that we should not have these prison structures. People are not responsible for their crime in the way that the prison system perceives it. So, you know, he's another rare exception, but very few and far between, I'm sorry to say. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Get your news on with Ron. Don't you want to know what's going on? We're getting our news on today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can tweet me an article at Ron Placone. We'll go through it together and make it our own. Get your news.